Okay, so back in December, Microsoft announced that they had a new Phi model, the Phi 4 model. And at the time, they only talked about having a 14 billion parameter model. And while that looked very interesting, even at the start, no weights came out for this model. Now, it was kind of bootlegged where people worked out that they could download the model off Azure and upload it to Hugging Face. But it took right through to January for them to actually officially release th those weights. Now, at that time, I was really interested, as you can see, in, okay, where's the 5.4 Mini, right? We know that the 14 billion parameter model is impressive. There's a lot of interesting things about it. But the fine model that I've always thought was really probably the most outstanding one was the 3.8 billion parameter mini, which existed for 5.2, 5.3, 5.3.5, etc. Well, sure enough, last week, Microsoft delivered on the 3.8B instruct model, as well as a number of different varieties of these models. And if you look at this sort of five family idea that they've got going here, we can see that there are a plethora of Phi models now. So in this video, I want to talk about what makes these models interesting, what's new with the Phi 4 ones, especially the Phi 4 multimodal model, and how they're starting to add in advanced reasoning to these Phi 4 models. So let's jump in and have a look at this release. So over on Hugging Face, we can see that we've got a number of different models in here. We've got the New 5.4 Mini Instruct. Now, unfortunately, it looks like they're not giving out the base model for this. So if you wanted to do full fine tunes, which was one of the nice things in the past for some of these, unfortunately, it looks like with the 5.4 models, we're not getting that. We're getting the 5.4 Mini Instruct, a 5.4 Multimodal Instruct. We're also getting Onyx versions of these models and even a GGUF version of the model. All right, so for the 5.4 Mini, one of the things that people want have wanted for a while was the whole idea of function calling. And this is something that now has been added into the 5.4 Mini 3.8B. So this basically means you can use this as a local model for doing function calling, doing sort of small agents that don't require huge amounts of reasoning but do have decision points that will benefit from function calling and deciding what tools to use and stuff like that in there. Another good thing to see is that clearly Microsoft has realized that people are using these models on devices, right? They're not using them in the cloud that much. So people are running them on things like LM Studio, Olama, and running quantized versions with things like both the GGUF format, but also Onyx in here. So it's kind of cool to see that they've actually released an Onyx runtime that you can basically use to serve this model in lots of different places, including things like Raspberry Pis, mobile phones, etc. So the 5.4 Mini Instruct model is 3.8 billion parameters, similar to what we had before. It looks like it's got a new tokenizer with this. And basically, this has been trained on 5 trillion tokens. So it's not a huge amount of data that it's been pre-trained on compared to other models out there now that are being trained on 12 to 15 trillion tokens or even more for some of the models that are out there. But it is interesting, again, that the Phi models are very much made up of synthetic data. And using that synthetic data to basically try and make the models good at math, good at coding. And you can imagine that over each version, they're basically getting better with that synthetic data set and trying out to see what actually works, etc. All right, now the two things that stand out for me that's really interesting in here is that if we remember back to Phi 3.5, we had a vision version of that model, which was basically a text model that had a vision encoder attached and then trained up to use this. So in 5.4, we've got something similar to that. But the cool thing here is no longer is this just a vision model. This is actually a full multimodal model. So if we dive into the paper, we can see that not only now do we have a vision encoder, but we've also got an audio encoder in here. So this allows the model to basically process images via image tokens that get converted via the vision encoder and also audio tokens, which are coming out of the audio encoder there. Now for the 5.4 multimodal model, this is also using that 3.8 billion parameter backbone model. But it's interesting here 
that they're sort of doing a mixture of LoRa's with this. And so basically they've got the vision encoder going on here, which is a SIGLIP encoder. I'm pretty sure this is the SIGLIP one, not the new SIGLIP two, which just came out of Google recently. So you could imagine that even future versions of this get better even still. But anyway, this can go out to images of 1344 by 1344. And they train this to basically generate interleaved image and text data tokens in there. Now they do the same thing for the speech slash audio elements in here. They have an audio encoder, which is actually bigger than the vision encoder in there. Then they also have these audio LoRa adapters to be able to get the model to use the tokens that are coming out of that audio encoder and going into the Phi 4 Mini in there. So this audio encoder is basically trained on 2 million hours of speech pairs for pre-training just to get that. And then to basically hook it up via the LoRa and stuff like that, they do another 100 million samples of curated speech and audio supervised fine tuning in there. So let's jump into the code, have a play with this and see what we can actually do with this 5.4 mini, quite as mini as 3.8. I think we're up to about 5.6 billion parameters all in. But let's see what we can do with this multimodal model and just see how it actually responds to both images and to audio, etc. Okay, so let's jump into the code and we can check out how this model actually performs. It's pretty cool that the Transformers library has sort of updated to be able to handle these, not only the LLMs and VLMs, but even these sort of multimodal models now. So this auto processor here is able to handle the audio as well as the images, which we'll see when we go through. So I'm using a collab with an A100 in here. I don't actually need the RAM. You'll see that the model itself is actually pretty small. So it may work on a T4. The only issue is that the version of flash attention, etc., may not work on some of the GPUs. But apart from that, actually the model is pretty small. So that, that's a good thing to, to see in here. All right, so we basically just load up the model. We wanna make sure that we've got trust remote code equals true, etc. Because we've got so much sort of extra code around the audio and the image and the handling of those for the processor in here. Once we've got that basically loaded in, as you can see, like I said, it's not using a huge amount of memory in here. And then we can just load up an image, run this through. Now the standard sort of thing is similar to what they did in 5.3 is where you basically just have an image tag. And depending on the image, if you've got multiple images, you actually change the number. So this is image one, because I'm just passing in image one. But if I was passing in three images or something like that, I would basically give each of them a number. And then I can ask something about it. Here you can see, I'm just going to ask what's shown in the image. If you uncomment these, you can actually get it to go through. And this was taken from the Fi 3 vision models in there. All right, so your prompt is going to go through the tokenizer. And then the processor, you will basically process text, image, audio, and then return tensors in there. So in this case, we've got no audio. So you'll see this as we go along. And I start to label the arguments just so that you can see it quite clearly. But the processor is going to be what takes these things and does the tokenization of the image and the tokenization of the audio. And then finally, you can just run this through the model just like normal, get a response out. So, okay, starting off with images, I've just put together a simple little function for doing this, where we're going to basically apply the chat template, etc. We're going to put the text in as the prompt, the image in as the first image in a list of images. And because we're only using one image, I've just hard coded this to be image one. Otherwise, if we were going to do something different, we would basically put in the different images, etc. All right, so this is an image that I've used for many of the VLMs. You can see it's an image with a flower with a bee. I'm always curious to see whether that will spot the bee. Sure enough, in this one, we can see the image shows a close-up of a bee on a pink flower with a blurred background. Now, the reason I'm getting two out is I'm printing one and returning one. Originally, I was going to put them into Markdown, etc. And the cool thing about this compared to some of the other models is that because it's a pretty good LLM, with the 5.4 mini instruct in there, we can ask it things like what kind of bee is in the image and it will give us information about this. 
It's also good at being able to pick up other things. So you can see here that, okay, the sort of second color is going to be this red color. So when I ask it, apart from pink, what bright color is another flower? It comes back straight away as red there. Another one that I've done for a lot of the VLMs is this picture of the planes. And we can see that this, again, it does well at knowing what the picture is. It's not good at counting, right? So when I ask it, how many planes are there? It says 10, when in fact there are 15 planes in the image. So that didn't work. Interestingly though, when I asked it for bounding boxes for the plane, it actually gives us back 16 different bounding boxes. So it could be that it's spotting some of these, but looking at the positions of them, they don't seem to be sort of great positions for plotting these out. If I ask it things like what airport is it that was just testing, I was kind of curious. It actually is LAX, but I could imagine that would be very hard for any model to work out. And it's interesting that it comes back unanswerable. So I like that in here. Another thing that this is really good at in the test so far has been OCR. So you can see here that I've just basically taken a screenshot of the blog post and basically just said, please transcribe the text in this. And it's come back with what is 5.4 multimodal, 5.4 marks new milestone in Microsoft's AI development. It's done a very nice job at going through all of this. Remember, it's just repeating because I reprint it and I return it as well, just so I could get the formatting I wanted. So that seems to have done a really nice job and seems to be a very high accuracy for doing this kind of thing. Of course, when you've got the text like this, we can also do it, ask it where we can say things like, okay, summarize this text. So it goes through and gives us a, a sort of quick rough summary of this. Maybe if we prompted this differently, we could actually guide the summary in a certain way, that kind of thing. We can also do visual question answering on the actual text, which is kind of cool in here. So you can see if I ask it, how big is the model? It gets that it's 5.6 B in there. So feel free to throw in a bunch of different sort of text in there and just be able to ask it if it's sort of seeing something in there. And that's a task that can be really kind of cool where you could just be having a loop going on where you're looping through images, asking it to find some particular reference where you don't have a perfect regex or something like that to be able to do it. All right, the next part is the audio part. And this part is actually pretty cool. So first off, I'm just loading up an audio, an MP3 audio here. Really the key thing is that we wanna get out the audio and the actual sample rate. So you'll see if I play this, I don't know the answer to that. Then you're, then I'd be some, some computer construct and not the person who created that meta company, but that would truly be meta. I mean, it's not going to be four decades before. Okay. So you can hear that Zuckerberg being interviewed and talking about some stuff in there. So we need a function to be able to process this. So to go into this function, we're going to have our prompt. We're going to have our audio and we're going to have the sample rate going in there again, just like with the image. We basically want to tag it as audio one and here and pass in the prompt. And then here you can see that after we've tokenized our prompt, we want to put this into the processor where we're going to put in text and we're going to put in the audios and the audio here is just going to be this one object that has audio and sample rate, right? It's a list of one in there running this. You can see that, okay, if I just ask it to transcribe the audio, we get a pretty cool sort of response back. So we're getting this, I don't know the answer. I'll basically play it so you can sort of check it as we go along. I don't know the answer to that. Then you're, then I'd be some, some computer construct and not the person who created that meta company, but that would truly be meta. I mean, it's not going to be four decades before we have photorealistic avatars like this. So I think we're much closer to that. Well, I think that's, this is like the key question, right? Because the, the thing that's different about virtual and hopefully augmented reality compared to all other forms of. Okay. As you can see, it's very accurate, right? At being able to transcribe the audio here and the accuracy on this, I think is even surpassing whisper for some things here. Obviously it's a much bigger model than something like that. And it's probably not the model you're going to use if you just wanted to do transcription. But I think like once it's working locally, it becomes really tempting to have this on your machine to just transcribe anytime you need something transcribed, it will transcribe it anytime 
you need some sort of image processing, you can get it to do that as well. Another cool thing that's really nice with the transcript that I took from one of the examples was that you can not only transcribe the audio to text, but then get it to translate that audio. So you can see here that it's basically transcribed it, gets to the separator token, then it goes into French and basically just gives us the same thing in French in here. So my guess is there's lots of ideas that you can play with this kind of thing. And then finally, just to finish up, just to show you, of course you can do text as well. In that case, we would just basically pass in, we would basically tokenize our text and pass in text equals prompt and just leave audio and images out of it in this case. So you could write a general function that basically looks for whatever you're putting in and then decides how many image tokens it needs, how many audio ones it needs, et cetera, as it goes th through here. But you can see just for text also, it's a pretty nice and standard sort of markdown text that we can use just like any other large language model, et cetera. So overall, and this is the model that I was playing with there, the 5.4 multimodal 5.6B. Overall, this model is definitely impressive. The fact that they can just sort of bolt these things on to the 5 for mini is really impressive. It would have been interesting to sort of see how does this actually go if you added these things to the big version of the model. But overall, yet again, I would say that the Phi family of models that they've released here is definitely very interesting. It's one of the ones that you probably want to have installed locally on your computer for doing different tasks, etc. And it is really cool to see that we've got a nice open weights model that can do all these multimodal tasks. Anyway, I would love to hear from you guys where you are thinking of using this. Maybe in a future video, I will look at doing some stuff with a local version of this and some tool calling and some other things like that as well. Uh, I definitely think this could be a useful little model for doing stuff with agents going forward. But I'd love to hear what you plan on using this for as well. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.